Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's looking at a Volvo XC90. Uh, it's a 2.4 D5 engine. So it's this engine right here. We'll lift off the cover. So straight away I can see down here he's put a new arm on the actuator flap. But you can see there there's a little bit of movement in the arm and there's a leakage coming from there so I think it's probably gonna need that that repair in there still to be honest. Needs more than just the replacement arm. It's gonna need the swirl flaps doing. Okay, so done a code scan here just a few minutes ago. There was these codes and also a sword flap code, but the arm obviously came off, so he's put a new arm on that, which is it'll be okay for now. But I'd suggest getting these getting the swirl flaps replaced. Really, these are the two codes uh, that he's had. He's had it at a garage and they've took the DPF off and cleaned it, um, but of course the problem's still here or it's back. So we've got particle filter trap and particle sensor trap. Let's go out of here and go to live data. Uh, we're going to go to differential pressure. No, we haven't got that. Let's have a look for particle trap. Particle trap. Temperature sensor to particle trap. Start the engine up. So we've still got zero pressure there. I'll accelerate it up. Still not getting any pressure coming from that. Let's go back out of here. Let me see if there's something else we can find for the DPF. Um, so we haven't got the oh, particle DPF. No. Pressure, atmospheric pressure, current. Okay, so it looks like those are the only two items we can find on live data, but as you can see there, when we accelerate it up, it doesn't move. Uh, it's got that triangle sign down there, time for service. Uncall deactivated. Okay, we can see the swirl flap arm moving around there. Uh, to be honest, from looking at that, it just it feels like the arm itself is broken away from the swirl flaps. I'm not too sure. You'd need to rip that out and have a look at that. But we're going to need to get down here for now, looking at this DPF. We're going to take this arm off, cross brace arm, get down here to the DPF pressure sensor and have a look at what's going on. Why is it not reading? So on each side here, you've got a couple of 13mm bolts. And then two on the opposite side here. So in here we've got a 19mm bolt here. It'd be better if you could let the engine cool down, this is hot. Pull this bolt out from this side. Now, if I remember rightly, this should now just lift up. Yep. Yeah. Get it from the middle. Lift her out. It's quite a heavy piece of metal, that. Now, the sensor is just down there with this plug on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the tubes, see if they look like they're perished or split. No, they look fine. So you can see down there, it's also had a new oxygen sensor. I'll just check all of the basic stuff first. Is it plugged in? Because you know I have seen that loads of times where someone's been messing around with the car and they just haven't plugged it back in properly. So now it's difficult to get in there to show you, but each side of the sensor here we have a T30 little Torx bolt 
or screw. We'll just get those open. Oh, drop that. So once you got it loose there, we can just unscrew it by hand. Okay, now we just pull the center out of the tube, so you'll have the two tubes right there. Okay, so what I do here is connect up a pressure gauge up to the sensor here. So this side here where it says high, connect that up there. Just push that in. So we'll watch the live data on the screen and we'll increase the pressure on here. And while we increase the pressure on here we should see the same on the sensor there but the sensor doesn't move. Okay so we know the sensor is not giving any reading so it's pretty much going to be either a dead sensor or bad wiring. So unplug the sensor, hook up a little multimeter here so add the earth onto the onto the metal of the engine there and we should get two sort of 5 volt signals, 4.9 volts and then this side over here 4.9 volts and then the center one is going to be the earth, this one here. So now if I connect the negative over here to the live of the car and put this into the center, you should see a minus 11 volts. So that means the earth's working. So that brings it back to this sensor being a dodgy sensor. Now I can see this sensor is brand new. It's a new sensor. Uh, it looks like the last person who done the work for him has fitted this. But uh, maybe it's just a crap brand, is it? Oh, it's a Bickerman. I have used these before myself, uh, that's what uh, Bennett's usually supply me. So I've got a few more of these sensors in the van but none of them fit the plug, it's slightly different. Okay so the engine's now off, we have 100 millibars of pressure, we're going to get this cleaning fluid here connected up to the pressure sensor. So just here the second hole, so the one hole is slightly bigger than the other. So it's the one closest to the engine, basically. So using a bottle of this launch DPF cleaner, and that goes into the gun here, that's connected to the sensor, and this is connected to a compressor. So just squeeze the trigger, hold that for a few minutes until all of the fluid has gone in. You'll see when it starts to get empty there. You'll see a clear tube. Well, it turns out my compressor was switched off. So the, uh, I thought the pressure was a little bit slow there coming out. Get that pump back up to 9 bar. Which is 131 psi. So now that's all done. Disconnect the gun, all of the fluids in there. Now we're going to start the engine back up. That connected. We're just going to keep an eye on the pressure here. You should see it coming down. So we can't use the live data from there because that's not working. Now the live data is saying with that unplugged, 65 millibars, which funnily enough matches up with that. But as you can see this one's going down. That one isn't. So we're almost there. So we're down to sort of three millibars now. Come back around the back here. Disconnect that. So with the plug disconnected on these, I assume it just goes to a standard setting of 65 there. So here comes Bennett's with my part. We'll get that new part off them there and get it fitted on. Okay, that's the new sensor fitted in. Okay, new sensor in. A little bit of a rev up and down. We can see the 
pressure there is moving. We've now got some smoke coming from the rear, or vapor, sorry. Okay, let's see if we got some power back. Definitely, it's out of limp mode. Okay, so he's had this other issue for a couple of years. Clunking noise as it goes out of gear. Let's have a look. See if I can get him to replicate it. Looks like it may need engine mounts. That bolt's loose. Let's tighten these bolts up and see what's going on. And that's it, the clunk noise is gone. Well, it looks like these bolts here they were just a little bit loose. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that sorted that out. It's two years he's been trying to sort that out. He's had that gearbox uh, specialist who would find the find the problem, but they said they couldn't find the problem. But it sounds like it was just coming from these. So that loud clunk is gone now. Yeah. So when you were driving the car, as you sort of put your foot on the accelerator, or as you let go, you hear a clunk, and then a clunk as it sort of put your foot back down. I can't believe he's had that problem two years and it's been to a, an automatic gearbox specialist. I'll be honest, I did think it was coming from the from the drive shaft or the rear subframe mount. I don't know how the sound sounded like it was coming from the rear subframe mount, but it's obviously coming from the front there. So yeah, it feels, feels like a new car. We have sort of one or two millibars there at idle. And when you rev it up and down, she's moving nicely. Perfect. So that's it, that's the end of that video. Uh, he got a nice little bonus at the end there, got that little knocking noise resolved. And I'll see you on our next video.